Budgeting is just like working out. You do not get the reward without consistency. I have learned through many failures that it does not matter how smart, how comprehensive, or how every painstaking detail is carefully calculated in your budgeting strategy. None of it matters if you cannot stick to it. In this video, I have put together a budgeting game plan that absolutely minimizes the amount of work that you need to do day in and day out. Learn the system, make it a habit, and you cannot fail. Let's get into it. The number one goal of this budgeting system is to be as passive as possible. I want you to think of the day one setup as an investment that will pay dividends in the future. We put in the effort one time to create a system that minimizes work for the rest of time. Budgets fail because of burnout. It's too much trouble to track the money in and out of all the categories. Your success hinges on setting up this system correctly. If you're here watching this video, I know you have the momentum to get started. If you can just set this system up, keeping the ball rolling will be easier than any other budget. You know what? On second thought, budgeting is more of a hybrid between working out and investing. With working out, the effort doesn't really go down. It does get easier if you find enjoyment in it, but the effort is still there. With budgeting, you have the ability to set up a system up front that can reduce how much effort is required going forward. First, we will talk about the tools that you will need to be successful. Second, I will walk you through creating a budget. And finally, the tracking system that keeps you on course. Step one is figuring out where your money is going today and how you want to change it. This will be the most work intensive part of the process, but once it's done, you reap the rewards. The first tool that you will need is a spreadsheet program like Microsoft Excel. If you do not have one on your computer, you can use an online spreadsheet program like Google Sheets. Before you run away, if spreadsheets are intimidating to you or you just hate them, I have already made this sample spreadsheet that I have linked in the description for you to use and follow along. The other tools that you will need are a credit card or debit card and optionally a phone application called Mint. These will come into play when we get into tracking your spending part, but more on that later. First, we need to tackle the spreadsheet. This spreadsheet will have three major categories, income and only two broad spending categories, constant spending and variable spending. First, let's talk income. The income category is easy. You just put your take home pay on your paycheck in the appropriate cell. If you are paid weekly, enter the full amount. In the weekly column, if you are paid every other week, enter the full amount divided by two. You also have the monthly column if you're a part of the unfortunate few who gets paid monthly and a yearly column for expected bonuses. Make sure to be very conservative with the bonus estimation though, since a bonus is typically not guaranteed. That's it for the income category. The next one we'll get into is the constant spending category. The constant spending category will consist of expenses like mortgage or rent, utilities, car payments, loan payments, subscriptions, consistent childcare purchases, and groceries. These are things that once you get dialed in, you do not change very much and or you do not have the ability to exercise control over the amount spent. In the spreadsheet I've constructed, I have already filled out a category for every expense known to man. Just simply delete the rows of expenses that do not apply to you or change them into something that is more relevant. Every spending item can be calculated on a weekly basis, monthly basis, or yearly basis. The section is pretty straightforward and once you have it built, it only serves to help you determine how much cash you have to work with in your budget for variable spending, which is the only category you need to track going forward. Again, we are trying to distill down all of your spending to the most important categories and only focus on tracking those. As you can see, as I complete the entries in the constant spending category, the remaining budget automatically fills in at the bottom. This remaining sum of money is your starting point for determining the next category. Now, before moving on, this is a good opportunity to audit your constant expenses like subscriptions. Maybe when you really think about it, you haven't used your Disney Plus in months, so you can go ahead and cancel it. If you find a constant spending item to drop, it feels pretty satisfying to see the number increase at the bottom of the spreadsheet. The goal is to keep this number as high as possible after filling out all of your constant and variable expenses so that you can have money left over for saving and investing. Thanks for staying with me this long. If you are enjoying the video, please give me a like down below. It really helps with the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. Let's move on. The variable spending category is where all the action is. Don't get me wrong though. 
The other categories are important because they must be accurate for this to work. The variable spending includes expenses like food and drinks at home, eating out, bars, hobbies, toys, vacations, gifts, donations. Expenses in this category are the only ones that require you to make a decision every day, every week, month, or year on a regular basis. Once again, I have already filled out the sample spreadsheet with all of the variable spending categories known to man. Just delete the rows that don't apply and change any rows to something that's more applicable to you for any category that I happen to miss. Unlike with constant spending, you actually have to put some effort into deciding how much money you will be allotted for each category in the variable spending. I've come up with two good options to accomplish this. First, some people love diving into a good spreadsheet, researching and calculating what the optimal amounts are for each category. I fall into this camp. I prefer not to close the spreadsheet until every item is meticulously calculated. But I understand not everybody shares my love for spreadsheets, so I have come up with a great alternative. With the second option, you only need to take a stab at the annual expense category. Things like yearly gifts or vacations, and it doesn't have to be perfect. With the remaining weekly and monthly expenses, just don't do it. You just go about your normal business and check your spending in these categories after one month. This is now your benchmark to beat in the next month. You are competing with your past self just to make incremental improvements. After repeating this process a few times, you will have a great idea of what targets you want to hit in your next cycle. Or you can just keep repeating this process until you arrive at numbers that you are happy with. That being said, I am willing to bet that after the first month, it will be pretty obvious where your spending weakness is. The beauty of this system is that we aim to zero in on the few categories that we really struggle with. If we can remove all the noise, all the spending that doesn't impact our success, then tracking becomes so much easier. Speaking of tracking, let's get into the final step. This is the step where all the budgeting systems out there crash and burn. This is the step that needs to be as easy and as passive as possible. We will accomplish this by investing in the setup. The main tool that you need for tracking is a dedicated spending vehicle for the weekly and monthly expenses. My preferred option is a dedicated credit card that you only use for variable spending. I like the credit card option because you naturally check it every month when you pay it off and you benefit from points and bonuses. Picking the best credit card can be overwhelming. If you would like me to make a video about the best credit cards, let me know in the comments. Another option is the David Ramsey method where you withdraw cash at the beginning of the month that exactly matches your variable spending budget. This method is good for people who have a hard time staying responsible with credit cards. You are only allowed to spend money on the variable spending category options with your withdrawn cash. Once you run out of cash, you hit your budget. I only recommend this if you absolutely cannot make your credit card work. The cash strategy is more effort and cash cannot synergize with the next tool I'm going to talk about. Regardless of what tool you decide to use, the important takeaway is that you need a very clear cut way to separate your variable spending from the noise. In this case, from the constant spending categories. This credit card or cash withdrawal is the first filter that helps you track your variable spending with nearly zero effort. It is an automatic check that can be evaluated at a glance. You only need to take a deeper dive if you busted your budget. The next tool is going to allow you to dive a little deeper with as little effort as possible. We are eliminating the need for you to go through several different credit cards or bank accounts or try to file your receipts so you can remember how much cash you spent where. Compiling spending from different places takes time and effort, which increases the odds of burnout. This is where the phone app Mint comes in. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this system is specifically set up to be as passive as possible after your initial setup. And keep in mind, there's nothing magical about Mint. It's just the app that I'm familiar with and I know it works. If you have another app that has the same capabilities, then use it. I'm not sponsored by Mint, but it would be nice if I was. You only need to link your one variable spending credit card to Mint, and it will automatically split up your purchases into different categories. You just need to create the categories in the app and input the amounts that you determined when you made your spreadsheet. You can see it even gives you a nice progress bar. So at a glance, you can tell where you went wrong or where you're in the process of going wrong. Or you can be a little more proactive and check it mid month to see if any categories are in danger of busting. Tracking is absolutely the key to a successful budget. The problem is impossible if you don't know what the problem is. You need feedback. 
If you have tried and failed to budget in the past, I'm willing to bet you got burnt out tracking expenses. But this system is different. You have done all the effort up front to create your budget, set up your credit card, and set up your app. The only thing you need to do now is refine the numbers just a bit. But this takes very little work. During the first few months, dial in your numbers on the spreadsheets and transfer those to the categories you already made on Mint. And keep in mind, if there are a few variable spending categories that you discover are never a problem for you, feel free to break them out of the category and move them up to the constant spending. That just means fewer categories for you to think about. It allows you to eliminate as much pointless effort as possible so you can just track the few categories that give you trouble. After you create a budget, designate a credit card, and set up Mint, the system does all of the filtering and all of the tracking for you. Just pay off your credit card, check Mint for the details, and adjust from there. That's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any budgeting hacks that you swear by. Also, if you're interested in unlocking your full wealth building potential, check out this video. Until next time.